<laughs> Hello and welcome to a new tutorial series on the coding train uh, using a piece of about a piece of software called Runway. So what is Runway? How do you download and install Runway and kind of tinker around with it? That's all I'm going to do in this particular video. Now let me be clear, Runway is not something that I've made. Uh, Runway is uh, made by a company, a new company called <laughs> Runway itself. Uh, it's a piece of software. Um, you can use it, you can download it for free, you can use it for free. There are aspects of it that require cloud GPU credits, which I'll get into later, and uh, you'll, you can get some free credits and a coupon code that you'll find in the description of this video. But really, I want to just talk to you about what it is, because I'm so excited about it, and I'm planning to use it in the future in a lot of future tutorials and coding challenges and teaching things that I'm going to do. Um, and I also should just mention that I'm an advisor to the company Runway itself, so I'm involved in that capacity. All right, so what is Runway? Now, right here it says, machine learning for creators. Bring the power of artificial intelligence to your creative project with an intuitive and simple visual interface. Start exploring new ways of creating today. So this this, to me, is like the core of Runway. I am somebody who's a creative coder. I'm working with processing and P5.js. You might be working with other pieces of software uh, that's just commercial software, coding environments. You're writing your own software. And you want to make use of recent advances in, mach in machine learning. You read about this model. You saw this YouTube video about this model. Can you use it in your thing? Well, before Runway, <laughs> one of the things you might have done is find your way to some GitHub repo that had like this very long readme of about all the different like dependencies you need to install and configure and then you've got to download this and install this and then make, build this library and, and you can really get stuck there for a long time. So Runway is an all-in-one piece of software with an interface that basically will run machine learning models for you, install and configure them without you having to do any other work but press a button called install and it gives you an interface to play with those models, experiment with those models, and then broadcast the results of those models to some other piece of software. And there's a variety of different ways you can do that broadcasting through um, HTTP requests, through OSC messages, and all these things might not make sense to you, which is totally fine. I'm going to poke through them and show you how they work with an eye towards at least showing you how to pair Runway with processing and how to pair a runway with P5.js and I'll also show you where there's lots of other examples and things you can uh, do with other platforms and stuff like that. So the first step you should do is click here under download runway beta. It will automatically trigger a download for Mac OS, Windows or Linux. Um, I've actually already downloaded and installed runway so I'm going to kind of skip that but uh, skip that stuff and just actually now run the software. Ah and now it's saying welcome to runway sign in to get started. Okay, so if you already have an account, you could just sign in with your account. I do already have an account, but I'm gonna create a new one just so we can follow along with the process. So I'm gonna go here, create an account. I'm gonna enter my email address, which is, shh, don't tell anyone, daniel at thecodingtrain.com. Then I'm gonna make a uh, username and password. Now that I've put in my very strong password, I'm gonna click next. And I'm gonna give my details, daniel, Shiftman, the coding train, create account. Ah, and it's giving me a verification code to daniel at thecodingtrain.com. Account has now been created and I can click start. So once you've downloaded, installed Runway, and signed up for an account, logged into your account, you will find this screen. So if you've been using Runway for a while, you might then end up here clicking on open workspaces because workspaces are a way of collecting a bunch of different models that you want to use for a particular project into a workspace. But we haven't done any of that, so the first thing that I'm going to do is just click on browse models. So the first thing that I might suggest that you do is just click on a model and see what you can do to play with it in the Runway interface itself. Because one of the things that's really wonderful about Runway is as a piece of software and interface, you can explore and experiment with the model to understand how it works, what it does well, what it doesn't well, do well, what it does at all, before starting to bring it into your own software or your own project. So I'm gonna pick this Spade Coco model, which I have never looked at before. It's very legitimate me. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I'm gonna click on that. Um, and now here I can find out some more information about the model. So I can find out what does the model do? It generates realistic images from sketches and doodles. Um, I can find out more information about the model. For example, this is the paper 
um, that describes this model, semantic image synthesis with spatially adaptive normalizations trained on Coco stuff data set. Remember when someone asked, is this, is, this, is this tutorial for beginners? Well, it is for beginners in that you're a beginner, you can come here and play around with it. But there's a, there's a lot of, you can go very deep too if you want to find the paper, read through the notes, and understand more about what this model, how it was built, what data it was trained on, which is always a very important question to ask whenever you're using a machine learning model. Um, so I can also, uh, we can see um, there are attributions here. So this is the organization that trained the model. These are the authors of the paper. Um, we can see when, what the size of it, uh, when it was created, if it's CPU and GPU supported. Um, we can also go under gallery and we can see just some images that have been created. And so we can get an idea. This is something, this is a model that's themed around something called Im image segmentation. So I have an image over here. What does it mean to do image segmentation? Well, this image is segmented, <laughs> divided into a bunch of different segments. Those segments are noted by color. So there's like a purple segment, a pink segment, a light green segment, and those colors are tied to labels in the model, essentially, that know about a kind of thing that it could draw in that area. So you could do image segmentation in two ways. I could take an existing image, like an image of me, and try to say like, oh, this, I'm gonna segment it. This is where my head is, this is where my hand is, this is where my hand is. Or I could generate images by sort of drawing on a blank image, saying put a hand over here, put a head over here. So that's what image segmentation is, at least in the way that I understand it. What have I done so far? I've downloaded Runway. I've poked around the models and I've just clicked on one. Now I want to use that model. I want to play with it. I want to see it run. So I'm going to go here to Add to Workspace. It's right up here, Add to Workspace. Now I don't have a workspace yet, so I need to make one. And I'm going to call this workspace, I'm going to say Coding Train Live Stream. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit Create. Now I have a workspace. And you can see this is my workspace. I have only one model added to this workspace over here. And it's kind of highlighting up for me right now what to do. I need to choose an input source. So every machine learning model is different. Some of them expect um, text input. Some of them expect image input. Some of them might expect input that's from, that's arbitrary scientific data from a spreadsheet. Then the model uh, is going to take that input in run it through the model and produce an output. And that output might be numbers, or it also might be an image, or it might be more text. So now we're in the sort of the space of a case-by-case -case basis, but if I understand image segmentation correctly, I'm pretty sure the input is going to be both an image, and the input and the output are both gonna be an image. Uh, let's make a little diagram. So we have this, uh, what was this model called again? Spade Coco. So we have this machine learning model. Presumably there's some neural network architecture in here. Maybe it has some convolutional layers. This is something we would want to read that paper to find out more. Runway is going to allow us to just use it out of the box. And you know, I certainly would always recommend reading more about it to learn more about how to use it. So my assumption here is I'm in my software that I want to build, I want to maybe create a drawing piece of software that allows a user to segment out an image. So you can imagine Maybe um, I'm gonna like kind of draw something that's one color. Look, I could use different color markers. Like I'm going to fill, you know, I'm gonna sort of fill this image in with a bunch of different colors. And then I'm going to feed that into the model and out will come an image. So we have input and we have output. And again, this is going to be different for every model that we might pick in Runway. Although there's a lot of conventions, a lot of the models expect images as input and output images. Some of them expect text as input and output an image, or image as input and output text, et cetera, and so on and so forth. Right, so now what I want to do is choose the input source in Runway for the model. So something that's going to produce a segmented image. And um, so that could be co coming from a file. It could actually come from a network connection, which I'll get into maybe in a future video or you can explore on your own. I'm just gonna pick segmentation. And now this is like the greatest thing ever because what's just happened is runway, your image segmentation is a common enough feature of machine learning models that Runway has built into it an entire drawing engine so that you can play around with image segmentation. So, um, and you can see these are the colors for different labels. So maybe what I want, it looks like it's a lot of transportation stuff. Um, so maybe what I want is, let's try, let's try drawing some people. Two people with an uh, airplane and a wine glass flying overhead. Okay. <laughs> How are we doing? 
<laughs> now I'm going to choose an output. And I just want to do a preview, right? Because preview right now is like, I'm not actually, I don't need to export this. I don't you need to use it somewhere else. I just want to play around with it in Runway itself. So I'm going to hit preview. Now I have selected my input, which is just the segmentation interface of Runway itself. I have selected my output, which is just a preview. Now it's time for me to run the model. And here we go, uh, run remotely. So a remote GPU enabled, and you can see just by signing up for Runway, I have $10 in remote GPU credits. It'll be interesting to see how much just running this once actually uses. Um, so one thing I'll mention now, uh, if you want to get additional credits, um, I can go over here. This is like the sort of icon for my profile. I can click on this. Um, I'm going to go now to uh, here. I'm going to go to get more credits. And this is going to take me to a browser page. And I could have certainly pay for more credits, but I'm going to click here and I'm going to redeem credits by saying coding train right here. So if you would like to get an additional $10 in credits, you can do this. And we can see now I should have uh, $20 in credits. So this icon up here, just so uh, we're clear, this icon up here is your workspaces, of which I only have one with one model that's connected to remote GPU. And if I wanted to look at other models, I would go here to this uh, icon. All right, now I'm going to press run remotely. Running the model remotely. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh my, <laughs> oh, it is so beautiful. I cannot believe it. <laughs> so this is what the Spade Coco machine learning model generates. It's really interesting to see the result here. So you can see me knowing nothing about this model, kind of how it works and what to expect, it gets some pretty weird results with it. Probably if I were a bit more thoughtful, maybe if I even like filled in the entire space, Right? I probably, I left so much of it blank. I also included like a giant wine glass with two people. It's very uh, kind of creepy looking, although this, I think this sort of resembles me in some strange sort of way. <laughs> um, and we can see here, look at this, five cents. So one thing I should mention is the reason why that took a long time it was like spinning up the server and everything to start actually running the model. But now that it's running in real time, it can happen much more quickly. Um, so let's try uh, filling it. So what would be a good thing to fill it with? Let's try floor wood. So let's try filling it with wood floor. Oh, whoa. Then let's put, let's try to put like some fruit. Ooh, this is looking much better now. Uh, let's put like an orange right next to it. Let's put a couple oranges. We're gonna make a little bowl of fruit. Wow, this is crazy. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. This, I gotta stop. That's pretty amazing. So again, here was just a little moment later of Bean being a little more thoughtful to think about how this model actually works and what, what might happen. You know, I, if I knew, if I looked at the data set, which is the fairly well known, I imagine, Coco image data set, that's probably going to be, give me even more information to think about what it's going to do well. But you can see how it's um, able to sort of think about a sort of little, see, a little, little pile of fruit here on a you know, wood background. It almost looks a little more like cloth, like it's sitting on a table. Um, pretty realistic. Um, and yes, Charlie um, England points out, which is correct, this is continuing to use the GPU credits. And we can see um, that, you know, still though, I've, even with doing a bunch of live painting, I've just used 10 cents there. So um, you can do a lot with the free $10 just in playing around. So let's look at, um, so input wise, I could also, so I chose to do segmentation here, but I could also use a file. So if I wanted to open a file on the computer, um, I could do it that way. And then output, if I change to export, um, I could also actually export that to uh, a variety of different formats. But of course, I could also right here, just under preview, I can click this download save button. And now I am saving forevermore um, that this particular image of the file. Now, what's really important here, actually more important here is under network. So if what I wanted to do, let's click over here under network, this means I can now communicate with this particular machine learning model from my own software, whether that's software that I've downloaded or purchased that somebody else has made that speaks 
one of these particular protocols or my own software that I'm writing in just about any programming language or environment if you, if you have a framework or module or library or support these types of protocols. So, uh, and one of the nice things here, if I click on JavaScript, it's actually, we can see there's actually a bit of code here that you can actually just copy paste into your JavaScript to run it uh, directly. So I'm gonna come back, um, OSC is also a really popular uh, protocol messaging, network messaging protocol for creative coders. It stands for open sound control and allows you to send data between applications. So I will also um, kind of come back and um, uh, in, a, in a separate video and show you about how some of these work. I should also probably mention that the Runway software itself works in a very similar way to a piece of software called Weconator that you might be familiar with. Weconator is um, a, a software that was created by Rebecca Fiebrink um, um, years ago that um, allows you to train a neural network uh, with data sent over OSC messaging and then get the results of that um, after the fact. The, I think the real sort of key difference here is Runway is really set up to support a huge treasure trove of pre-trained models. Um, whereas Weconator was more for training on training neural networks on the fly with small bits of data. Um, but, and I will say that one of the things that Runway is planning maybe by September is to start coming out with features for training your own model as well. So thanks for this, uh, watching this introduction to Runway, just sort of the basics of downloading and installing the software, what it is from a high level point of view, um, what the features of the interface work, um, how to get some free cloud credits. And what I would suggest that you do after watching this video is uh, download, run it, uh, run the software and go to this browse models page. So you can see there's a lot of different models for looking at motion, generative, community, text, recognition. Click around here. Uh, let's try this recognition one, uh, face recognition, dense cap. Um, where is PoseNet um, in here? That might be under motion. Uh, dense pose PoseNet. So here's a model called PoseNet, which performs real-time skeletal tracking of one or more people. I've covered this model um, in other uh, libraries like the ML5.js library with TensorFlow.js. And so what I'm going to do in the next video is use this model PoseNet in Runway with my webcam running it locally on this computer without requiring cloud credits and then get the results of this model in processing itself. So I'm going to show you that whole workflow. But poke around, click around, find a model that you like. Let me know about it in the comments, share images that you made with it, and look forward to seeing what you make with Runway. Okay, thanks for watching.